The Handmaiden's Tale Pilot A road cars through the main countryside. A car appears driving too fast. It swerves, fish tails in, skids off the road. A car bounces across a grassy pasture and stops. The engine revs, the vehicles spin. The car doesn't move. Luke, former hipster, jumps out, looks under the car, and the wheels are buried in the soft ground. June 28 gets out, careless. Be pretty. On a normal day, she's feisty and capable. Today, she's fighting panic. She leans in the back seat and pulls on Hannah. The three-year-old is scared, crying a bit. June to Hannah. Shh, you okay? Did the car go to bump? To Luke, urgent. Can we push it out? Luke, mind racing, too fearful. I don't know, I think. And then we've got, we need to put something under the wheels. Luke looks around the car, pops the truck, rushing. So and scream in the distance, climbing in closer. Luke and June freeze, fear of terror. They're out of time. Luke makes a decision. June, we need a we need a car. Luke grabs a backpack, starts tossing a water bottle. Dapers, a small zip top bag filled with gold jewelry. Luke, just keep going north. Luke points across the field to the woods. Luke, it's about two miles up to the river. You said somebody. Could would meet us and then go I'll catch up the so and so louder. Engines growl nearby, June hesitates, but for just for a moment there's no time for settlement. She pulls Hannah close and runs to the for the woods. She's not back. Main day woods day. Tall box elders and sugar maples shade at undergrowth of spiny basil basilem pines. June runs carrying Hannah. She weaves through the, between the trees. She's gone a few hundred yards again. Three quick gunshots echo. June stops short. She turns back and scans the woods for a long, terrible beat. Nothing. Just round the, just the sounds of the forest. Trees creaking in the wind. Then she hears, sees movement. Not Luke. Men in black uniforms. She can hear their faint shouts. They carry stubby, monotonic rifles. Fuck. June runs for the, her life. She stumbles around, most falls. Keep running as fast as she can. She's grasping for fear and exertion. But she can't, isn't going to outrun them, not carrying Hannah. She looks around for someone where to hide. Gates a quick decision. June pulls Hannah to the ground behind a fallen tree. Hannah cries. June covers her mouth. June, on the side, shh, baby girl, please. We soon close in. Six, eight of them, all men. We can see them now clearly. We can see them clearly now. They ain't. They aren't police. They aren't soldiers. They no American flag on these uniforms. There's a symbol on the shoulder. Two angel wings. They are guardians of faith. Guardian. One pointing. Go around, up around there. Guardian. Two. You see her? June holds Hannah tightly as the guardians move closer. A mind race. Then suddenly... Her most primal instincts take over. June gets up and runs with Hannah in her arms. God immediately spots her. God in air. June runs hard, fast, fueled by a crystalline panic. The God in sprints after her, catches up. She, he grabs her by the collar. June twists vis, vis, viciously. She punches the God in a few hard jabs and vanishes, pull free. June runs, holding Hannah close. A more God in to caught up. They grab her, pulling her down to the ground. June, get off. Get the fuck off me. June screams, claws, punches, kicks. A guardian pulls away, screaming, his eyes bloody. Ready, beaded eyed guardian stumbles back, grasping at his groin. Beaded eyed guardian, fear of hurting, fear of awe. She's a fighter, but there isn't too many. The guardians manage to hold her. They drag Hannah from arms. June, no, no, don't touch her. Hannah, mummy. June desperately tries to get free. The beady eyed guardian is still hurting. The kick to the groin hits June in the head with a truncheon. June falls back as the world swims grey. Guardian, one. R.E. June, careful, she's a red tag. Hannah, mummy. June turns her head, half conscious. She sees Hannah reaching out for her. The guardian carries away. On June's face as her eyes flutter. Unconscious. Main woods day later. Over white voices, dry leaves, sticks crackling. The sound of boots walking on the forest floor. June's face as she drifts awake. 
She tries to focus. She can see the trees up above stretching the grey sky. She's moving, pulling back. We see the dune stretch, stretcher. God is carrying her out of the woods. Main country road day continues. The guardian carrying June towards the road. June can see her car still sitting in the field where she left it. No sign of Luke. Three black SUVs sit parked on the road. Officially visual vehicles with flashing lights. They're all marked with the same angel wing symbol. Wild guardians mill around. The grand van awaits. Waits. Doors open like a trap. Guardians load June into the van. They lock the doors. The blood red van drives away down the country road. It grows smaller in the distance. We hear June's voice. June, calm. A chair, a table, a lamp. Woodford House, bedroom, bay. The bedroom is perfectly neat. Decorated in beiges, polished wood floor, braged, beaded rug, a folksy touch. It could be a room of a quaint New England B&B, June. Above on the ceiling in the middle of the room is a spot that had been plastered over then, then. There must have been a chandelier once. He moved everything, everything you can tie a rope to. June sits with her hands folded, looking out the window. She wears a full red dress, almost a cloak. A starched white bonnet covers her head, obscures her face. June, there's a window with white curtains of glass is shutterproof. But isn't running away, but isn't running away they're afraid of. Handmade and cut, wouldn't get so far. It's those other escapes, the ones you can open and yourself and then giving a go to the edge and then or a twisted sheet in a sandalet chandelier it's down a rolly turbulex a woman draped in red in this dull house perfect bedroom June I try to think I don't try to think about these escapes it's hard on every day the only thing in that can hurt that your chances I tend to survive I tend to survive for her then my name is Orifred I am another name it, but he's forbidden now. So many other things are forbidden now. June is now offered. Welcome to our world. Welcome to the good lad. There was somewhere in the house. Clock chimes loudly. Woodford House. Woodford House. Halfway stairs. Day. Offered walks down the stairs. Offered walks down the stairs. She moves so quietly. It's like she hasn't been even pushed in the air in front of her. She stops outside the kitchen door. In the kitchen, 50 gruff knees, bread. She hears a dull green dress. Where's the dog being dressed? The uniform of Martha, a cast of domestic workers in this society. Alfred watches a kneeling the heavy bread dough. Alfred, Rita makes the bread from the scratch. It's the kind of thing they do. they like the Marthas to to do, and then return to traditional values. That's what they fought for. Rita sees Alfred. Rita annoyed, always showing up when I'm in the, in the mist. Hold your horses. She wipes her flurry hands in the bank and pulls out a seat of keys from her pocket. She crosses to her cabinet and locks it. Alfred awaits in the hallway. A soft flickering catches her attention. Alfred, Alfred looks around the realm. A door slightly open and reveals a perfectly decorated sitting room. In the sitting room, Alfred can't, can just see the shoulder of a woman in blue. She sits in a chair, knitting. She need, her needles click almost each other. Looking at the woman, Alfred flashes back to sitting room, room day, flashback. Inside the sitting room window, a hard rain falls. Alfred stands in a red cloak, a red suitcase beside her. It's still damp from the rain. She's alone in the room, eyes cast down, a moving figure in red. There are no books in the room, no visible writing or any kind, no, no technology. The only sound is the rain hitting the window. A spring day would pump. Cold drops, Sienna Joy opens the door, strides in. She's brittle, faulty, a signature blue, blue, pale blue of Commander's wife. Off her, her Fred stands and starts to look towards Serena. So per, it's relaxed, but she starts herself, keeps her head down, eyes to the floor. Serena offers off Fred's twitch and catch herself. Then Serena makes a beat to joy her bow at work. Then Serena, Joy. So, here you are. Alfred keeps her eyes lowered. Alfred, here I am. And then Aunt Lilia said it was best not to speak to a wife unless they ask you a direct question. Think of it. Think of it from their point of view, as Aunt Lilia said. Isn't easy for them. And then, boo, fucking who? 
Selena Joy sits, takes a cigarette and lights it. She looks of Fred up and down and off a long beat of different Selena Joy. You sit down. I don't have a practice. Of, don't make a practice of it. But just this time, while Fred considers, he's carefully choosing every word, every moment. This is a dance. Uh, Fred missteps there with the consequences. Uh, Fred sits, holds her hands in a lap. Serena Joy. So, old, what's his name? Isn't work, didn't work out, Alfred. Oh, no, madam. Serena Joy, tough luck. This is your second post in there? Alfred, oh, yes, madam. Serena Joy. Good. Last one was brand, a brand new. I was like training a dog. And not a very smart one. And then I expect you to roll the rules, Alfred. Oh, yes, madam. Serena Joy, don't call me madam. You're not a Martha. For the doorway, someone clears her throat. Oh, Fred glances over and sees Commander Wilfred, 50, tall, a little thick in places, but not necessarily mostly handsome, but uh, commanding. Oh, Fred immediately stands up, bows her head completely. So then Joy continued, well, look what the cat dragged in. Oh, hey, hey, oh, Fred, this is the new one. Commander to oh, Fred, to casual, hello, They're catching himself. Bless be the fruit. Alfred oh, made the road open a beat, and then, Commander, I am Commander Waterford. Fred Waterford. Oh, Fred, I am with Fred. Commander Wright. Well, good. The well process is prescribed, and that, sure. Commander turns the lead, pauses. his commander. Brady, nice to meet you. Turn his right, our acts of a glare. This is part of the ritual routine. It's far too intimate. Alfred oh, turns the words, and she runs o- and the rules over in her head. She doesn't know how to play it. What to say? She chooses Offred. Thank you. Come on the leaves. Offred shifts. A comfortable silence. The rain hits the window. An even ribbon of taps. Offred sits down again. Serena Joy. Sharply. Oh, get up. Offred gets up. Serena Joy. I want to see a little of you. A puzzle. Understand? Offred, yes, madam. And then, yes. Is there any joy? Miss Waterford. Then you find that in this house we believe in mercy. If I get trouble, believe me, I'll give you trouble back. Offred stares down at the floor as we flash in flashback. Waterford House. Always stares day. Rita steps up, bringing for offered, being offered out of, her, out of her memory. Rita, tell them fresh the, the, the eggs, not like last time. Tell them who, who it is for, and they won't mess around. Read her hands out. The wick of the shopping basket. They tear some paper tokens from the There are places on them. Pictures on them, not, but no words. Twelve eggs, a piece of cheese, a fish. Offer it, okay? Rita offers a frown, heads back to work. Offer it. The frown is impersonal. It's really the red dress she just approves of. And then I heard Rita talking to Martha's, the other house. I wouldn't debase myself like that, they say. Oh, I'm not. It's not what you call hard work. Do the shopping and spread your legs. Rita goes back to kneading the bread, sinking her hands in a soft dough. Offered watch. Offer as her watches hungrily. Rita, you've got to stand there all day, be rude, leaving your friend out there waiting, or Fred. I want to tell her that off Jen is not her friend. I've strange barely fifty words of her in the two months since I've got here. I want to tell her I silly believe that off Jen is a kind of pious little shit with a broomstick up her arse, and then Offred, under his eye, Offred leaves off Rita back to work, Wolfred House. Day, Offred comes out. Walks down the low bath bordered with flowers. The garden is beautiful, perfectly kept. A few guardians patrol. Guns slung over the shoulders. Nicky Blaine digs twenty six. Digs in the flower bed. Jacky the boy shot away. He wears a guardian uniform. His jacket off and his shirt open at the throat. Oh, freedom! Are we Nick? He's one of the guardians assigned to the house. He drives the commander. The son of joy has him help her in the garden. Do some of the heavy lifting and then. 
I know his name, Nick. I heard the commander speaking to him once, Nick. I won't be needing the car. Off it stops. Nick's wheelbarrow and garden tool block the party. Doesn't say anything. Waits for him to notice. Nick, I read a roadblock. I'm sorry. Alfred gives a tiny nod. Doesn't look up. Nick starts to clear the path. Alfred looks at his sweaty, muscled forearms. He lifts the toy tools. He forces himself to look away. Nick, going shopping? Alfred, no, Nick. I'm going, going to knock back a few more details at an Oster House bar. I'll come along and then, uh, Alfred, yes. Nick, if you're going to, if you're going to all fresh, avoid the chicken. I read they got the crazy levels of dots in. Alfred hesitates, weighs her response. Right away, so careful. Alfred, I'm going to load some fishes, Nick. Then you should avoid the tuna. I've eaten an Alfred Murphy. <laughs> okay. Nick, no, I just don't like tuna very much. Nick smiles. It's almost a, a, a normal moment. The garden path is clear. And Alf, Alfred lingers. Alfred, he lives here. Under the garage, low status. He hasn't even been issued a woman. Maybe he's lonely. Maybe he watches me. Then hardly. Maybe he's an eye. Oh, fuck. You can see the terror in her eyes, even if he doesn't know exactly why. Later we find out that I, the secret police of Galead, Gasapo, Alfred, goes pale, looks away. Alfred, be as saintly as possible. Please be with you. He hurries away for the gate. Off Jen waits on the sidewalk. He's in a red cloak, white bonnet. She, uh, she's another handmaid. Offered a twin, offered a twin, dressed exactly like how about a hat bowed, head, head bowed. Off Jen, blessed be the fruit. Off my Alfred, Alfred, he's still rattled. She still make the mistake nicking. I'm afraid the mistake is possible, Alfred, shakily. May the Lord open. Alfred Jen notices he's edited. Off Jen, are you okay, Alfred? Alfred, yes, very well. Please be. You are so kind to ask. Then the pious little shit. Alfred tries to calm herself as she walks off with Alfred. <sighs> Gildred upscale neighborhood day, iconic, idyllic, stately homes with beautiful gardens hiding so much darkness. May Marthas walk on the street, some guardians, no wives, no commanders. You Marthas push controllers or walk, walk, strollers or walk with boy children. There are no girl children outside. The doors that pass or either commander black or blue, blue electric cars, guzzlers, guzzlers, a world in a few military homies pass black. The swing symbol on the doors of Fred walks with Ralph Jen, off Jen. We do go elsewhere in twos. This is supposed to be for our protection. But bullshit, the truth is they're watching each other each other over any whiff of her say, and then she is my spy as I am hers. And then Alfred, she has never said anything that was not so strictly ultrafox. But neither have I. She may be a true believer handmaid in some more than, more than name. I can't take that risk. I might end up I can't end up on the wall. Leave my daughter here. Alone. I've been sent. Good weather. Of Jen. Which I receive with joy. And then. A war is well. Going well I hear. Of Fred reacts. We're hungry. Does he hear any news? But she quickly buries the desire. Answers. As evenly as possible. Of Fred. Eager. Playing call. By his hand. Of Fred. He defeated more of his rebels. Of Fred. Praise be. And then very carefully. What are... What are they, the rebels? Ofgen hesitates, narrows her eyes. Ofgen. Of, of, of Fred. Ari, Ofgen, look. She gives her that look. I want to punch her in the face. And then she's right. Uh, any courtesy of danger is dangerous. But I'm aware of the news. If it's false news, it must be in something. Ofgen's suspicion wanes. She smiles. Ofgen. Practice, I think, strong bombers. They had a strong hold and blue heels. Oh, Fred waits eager for Ofgen. Will offer more. She doesn't. After long beat, Ofgen. Of Fred. The hope abandons her hopes. Ofred, oh, praise be. 
of Fred and Rev of Jen pass a small white church behind a wrought iron gate, commander's wife in blue dresses, chat stand chatting near a line of idling black SUVs at that door. The church opens. A dozen pre president girls emerge from the church, dressed in long pink and white smocks, virginal, arms guarded before escort them. Office stops, stares at the girls. One girl looks away, smiles, and offered, offered as we day to day flashback. Free, free old Hannah runs into breaking wives, laughing, poor joy, in flashback. Goodread. Upscale neighbourhood of church, back on on Alfred, back not by memory. Off Jen, Alfred, we should go. She t- turns, trembling slightly, fighting her emotions. Okay, they walk on loaves and fishes. Day, Alfred and Jen, off Jen near enter. A sign shows a loaf of bread and a fish. Pictures, no writing. Only women are shopping. Handmade, some Martha's, a few Akino Akino wives. Working class wives in multicolored dresses is a grocery store, some bare shelves, not too much produce, but otherwise pretty ordinary. It's like Ralph's, except for the armed guards patrolling the red aisles and the packages of food marked with pictures. This is no, there is no writing anywhere. Alfred is still shaken by a memory of a Hannah. She follows Oak Jane by rote, her think, not thinking, her two handmaids of smell. Sandy Mel, Nineteen, Wilt Walker, and Offerick, they do of a servant. Sam up with sighted whispers. Of of under under his eye, chatty. Did you see? They were, they have oranges. Off Jen. Praise be the war in Florida. It must be going well. So Samuel, I know, I know, right? Off Jen to of Fred. Your mistress likes oranges. Of of Frick, cynical. Just. Make sure she doesn't. She knows you've got them. Don't let Ma- Martha take the credit. Our Fred fights to focus on the conservation. Conservation. Finally, says Our Fred, "I don't have a toke for oranges." Of Samuel, tell them you are commander. Well, Rayford's very high up. Your name is is in the news. Our Fred looks at her sharply. Our Samuel realizes. Go realizes. Goes ashen. Oh, Samuel, I can't read it. I promise, I just overheard my mistress. Oh, Fred is re- digging back deep, self in deeper. Off Jen comes to the rescue. Off Jen, we should get some oranges before they've all gone. He walk off, off the red weights at the moment, still shuddering from memory of her daughter. A beat, then she follows. Those and fishes minutes later, the crows of oranges are stacked to make shift just lay. Women crowd around. Often Offric and other Hamries make oranges. Offer just stares at the crates, mine elsewhere. Often pray be his bounty to Alfred. Take some. Offred takes a few oranges, but makes puts them back in a basket. He does. Offred, you took my daughters, I didn't need oranges. I need her back. I need to scream. I need to grab the nearest gun. She got an in. I need someone to talk to. And then I wish Mara was a hair. Sedge of carpet, gymnasium. Day flashback. Ain't on a man, woman. Mora, A28. Quick and profane. Seems to be listening. Seems to be listening intently. She wears a red handmade dress, sits on school desk. We pull back to the reveal of former high school, been turned to an induction, indoctrination centre for homemates. Aunt Lydia, they made such a mess of everything. They filled the air with chemicals and radiation poison. In the gym, Mara and other women in red dress sat in rows at the desk. Lions is folded, silent, obedient, eyes folded. Stern women in brown uniforms watch the clothes. Prow castle prods hung from around the table. These, these are they are aunts, brutal overseers of the hundred majors around tea. Auntie Linda present and statistic teaches lectures the women as computer projects power point slides on in a screen. There's a photograph of falling birth rates. Aunt Lydia 
So God whipped up a special play just for them. Play with fidelity. Do you hear what I blame him? I certainly do not. The door opens. Mara op- turns her head slightly, just enough to flee. And across the room, guardians lead a group of new arrivals, Guru Jane, 22, ba- Baisley, and up Offord. Offred shuffles, looking out a little sleepy, draped, drugged, then to Nilly, unto Lydia. As darkness rates fell, death rates fell, birth rates fell, you do, you, what did you do? You made me things worse. It shows a graph of falling birth rates. The lump lily continue. Oh, so God whipped up a special plague just for them. Plague of infidelity. Do you blame him? I most certainly do not. The door opens. Mora turns her head slightly. Just enough to see. Across the room, God is lead. A group of new arrivals, including Jesling, Quinto, Bailey, Bullsey and Offred. Offred. Offred shovels looking for a little sleepy. Drugged. Aunt Lydia, at the birth rates fall, what did you do? It made things worse. Can you imagine birth control pills? Where are they after pills? Cutting murdering babies in a broom. Cutting them out into pieces. Lydia takes a beat. As if the pain is too much for her. She steady herself, goes on, Aunt Lydia. How could I have done such thing? They have done such things. Just so they could have their orgies. They're tender. So they couldn't do it out. Look. Not only like breast sh- weakness, they are dirty women, they are slow sluts. The guardian Jens leads a woman to death. Offred looks over to the r- r- room of women. She spots Mora. Eyes connect, recognition. We flash back to Cambridge apartment morning. Flashback. Offred is among all clothes, sits at the kitchen table, working on a laptop. Notes and books are scattered across the table. She sits coffee. We seem so normal, so decadent can prepare the life in Gilead. Mora enters t shirt and pajamas, bottoms, bed head. Offred, oh, it might have ja- him. Mora, got any of his cigarettes? Offred, oh, in my jacket, maybe. Morid, where's your jacket, Offred? Oh, it's accessory. Jude, I need to finish this. I'm being due by 10, Mora. For Dread Reach class? Off oh, 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 her nod. What is it about? Alfred, campus sexual assault. Mona, are you? For, uh, for or against? This gets a little gr- grin for Alfred. A pretty woman comes out of Alfred's r- Maury's room, leans into the kitchen. Mormon, well, oh, honey, I've got to get to work. And then we've got to go do this again. Should we do this again? Maura, babe, I love, I love that. And the woman smiles politely to Alfred and heads out. Alfred looks to Maura. Alfred, you didn't. You didn't even remember a lane, do you? Moa blasted. Just give me a fucking cigarette. Two friends. Flashback in the centre gymnasium continuing. Moa and Alfred meet eyes. Moa shakes her head just slightly. No. Then Moa looks away. Alfred understands the message. Don't let anyone see that we don't know, we know each other. She walks past Moa. Not offering any recognition, she sits down. Aunt Lydia continues to lecture, full of devotion. Aunt Lydia, with all your special girls. Being a special girl's fertility is a gift directly from God, which has left you intact for biblical purposes. Then, like Bublio, the sub Rachel, you girls will serve the leaders of the faithful. They're barren wives, they bear their children, not for them. You bear their children for them. You are so lucky, so privileged, you mean. Twenty three, ballsy, other rival sits down behind Offred, leans to her. Jenny whispers, Welcome to the freaking Looney Bin, right? Jane Ludine's smile rings immediately, and Aunt strides, aunt strides over. Without a word, she hits Janine on the head. Janine, Jesus, what the fuck? And Aunt Lydia comes over. A murmur runs for the woman. Like Lydia, all quiet girls. We have quiet, just like mice, to Janine. Welcome to the way. Ra- to the Rachel and Lena Centre and then up Janine default 
to find. Fuck you. I need to please. Ready to meet dear. I need to quickly pulls her pod and jam into between Nadine's neck. She shocks her, holding a prod against her skin. Janine screams, carrying three aunts, just saying, pulling Janine to her feet and dragging away. Aunt Leslie the heads back to the front of the makeshift classroom. Oh, Fred, there's it, other meek, and then they always leave out the park without her in the earth. Oh, Lydia, back to work, shabby girls. Oh, Fred, oh, no, Fred, is, but Aunt Lydia returns to a lecture. Red centre the cafeteria at night. The cafeteria has been converted into dome, handmaids in training. Blue moonlight glows through the windows, illuminating neat rows of cots. Mora and Alfred lie in their beds, talking quickly, quietly, quietly, talking quietly to them carefully. Alfred, I tried to run with her, but she was so heavy I tried, Mora, so much sympathy. Hey, I know, and then those motherfuckers were chasing you with their machine guns. None of this is your fault. Alfred doesn't know. I know. Then, and I heard shots. You must have tried to slow down somehow. Give us a better chance to get to the border. And then they just shot him. Mora reaches out, touches her face. Mora, don't lose hope, darling. We've always been, been a survivor. He's always been a survivor, Alfred. No, he's dead, Mora. And then, what about Alf- Odetti? Oh, you class his old one woman sent to the colonies. He's gone in the first date purge. She is on the top of the list, and then real crazy. They told us exactly what they believed in, what they wanted to, to do. Mora, don't always look, lose hope, darling. We've always been survivor. My offer, Alfred, no, he's dead, Mora. And then, what about Odette? Mora, reclassified as unknown woman, sent to colony. She's gone on the first diet purge. She's at the top of the list. And then, we were stupid. They told us exactly what they believed in. They wanted it to do. We called them wingnuts. Alfred, they are. Mora, we shouldn't have taken them seriously. We didn't look up. The fucking phones until it was too late. Of course, the cafe in the door opened slightly, loudly. Offered a Murray immediately closed her eyes and feigns to sleep. Two aunts dragged Jadine to the room. She limped. Moaning, bandage covers her right eye. There is a small stain of blood on the gauze. They dropped Jadine into a cot to leave. Off the, off the door, shuts the door. Room is silent. Jadine comes up and whimpers softly. Offered listens. A terrible, it is a terrible sound, Alfred. What did he do to her? Mora, it's my right eye. If a frenzy, pluck it out. And we're breathing stock, kid. You don't know, need eyes for that. Alfred tries to absorb her, it's a rarity. Janine whimpers. Alfred, we're down the rabbit hole or something. Nora, nope, no joke. Yep, God, I'm look, kill for a fucking cigarette. Alfred mutters a smile. Off. These friends, we flashback, go to the wall day. Four bodies hanging by the necks from the hooks on the brickwork. Hands tied in front, white bags over their heads. Each body is a plate of card and hung around its neck, a woven thesis, a blue triangle, a new invert, a red inverted class. Pull back to reveal the Alfred and Alfred looking at the wall. Alfred, a priest, a doctor, a lesbian, and then I think I heard that, done that joke once. It wasn't the punchline, then Mora. Is not there. She could still be dead, I know, but there are hundreds of other walls, a hundred towns, thousand mass graves in the woods, and then she isn't here. That gives me hope. More maybe for her so but that's a sort of hope that's a sort of hope, more or less. Church bells ring out. Time to go home, Alfred. Should we go take the long way by the river? Alfred offers uh, nods and remembers painfully summary day for Alfred. Alfred, I can't. And then I have to be, get ready for summary. Alfred looks grey, but Ofgen reacts with a strange joy. Ofgen, praise be, we go straight home then. 
and then may God bless the endeavour and bring forth his miracle. Offer it hiding bread, praise be. Offer it joy the house. Bathroom twilight. The bathroom is decorated with blue bill bill paper. Contains a fake blue fake cover. Fake fur cover on the floor that sleep. Perfectly neat. The bathroom that might belong to your great your great aunt. Seeing rising from full bathroom. Alfred undresses, removing her white wings. Shaking loose her long hair. Alfred, you look out to the mirror. And there are no razors, of course. There are instances of bathrooms at the beginning. Cuttings, drownings. For they got all the bugs ironed out. She moves her heavy red cloak. The petticoats of red stockings of loose white cotton. Pantaloons, Alfred. Lies into the tub. Hot water, it feels lovely. Alfred, the bath is so quiet before the ceremony. I am to make myself clean. It's also a luxury, just to take off the veil, to feel my own hair against my own hair. My hands, it's a luxury. Alfred washes her hair. The first time we notice a slight, small, red metal cuff, top curve of her ear. It's a six-digit number etched on the surface. Cuff would be, could be dreary another time, edgy and urban. But it, it, this isn't dreary. It's an ear tag akin to the identity tags used on kettle. Alfred lies back and closes his eyes. Oh, no, Alfred, we flash back to apartment bathroom. Flashback, Alfred takes a bath of May B. Mara. Maya, bef- she's six months fat and slippery. Mara squeals. Alfred buries her face in the Mara's face, wet and perfect neck as it hails lately. Alfred, she comes to me so clearly in the bath, a perfect memory. But um, the quest- dark questions are true, Alfred. Where do you feel? Where do I. Well, when do I come to her? And then does she even remember me? Please, God, let her remember me. The memory bursts abruptly. In flashback, Waterford House, brewed for a twilight. As Alfred jerks back into reality, her eyes open. Alfred, that's probably told her I was dead. That's why they, that's what they do. Best thing for everyone, they say. And then when people say they always mean it's the best thing for them, it mean, never means the best thing for you. Off her face. Waterfront house, bedroom, night. Alfred sits in the bed, dressed and still, hands folded in the lap. A telegraphy, telebox. A mind races. Alfred, I am washed and brushed like a prize pig. And then... I want to know what I did to deserve this. First back to the red centre, gymnasium day. Chairs arranged in a circle with a sitting chair. Single chair in the centre, Alfred. Maria and uh, Maria... Uh, and other handmaids in training sit on a perimeter. Janine sits in the centre chair. She wears a s- small bandage over a missing eye. Aunt Lydia st- stands beside her. Another auntie stands, speak, salt the outlines of the circle, waiting all, waiting all the women. Catapult is ready, Janine. Why he kept coming down into the basement for hours? Why he kept coming down from the basement for hours? I felt like at first he took turns, but later... I took, I think there were two or three at a time. I know most of them for school. I couldn't believe what they, they were doing it, that it was happening, Aunt Lydia. But it did happen, Janine, yeah. Aunt Lydia, and whose lead led them on to? Who thought was it, Janine? Chokes weakly. She shakes her hands ahead, Aunt Lydia. Who thought was it, girls? Alfred looks at Janine. She's crying now. Maria, Mona, Maria, Mona, Maria. Mona, Maureen, Morona, and other women in the circle respond. Pointing and chanting in the unison, Alfred joins weakly. Woman, her fault, her fault, her fault. Women, her fault, her fault, her fault. Olivia gives her a f- <coughs> Alfred a stern look. She's not strumming enough enthusiasm. Mona, Maureen, Mona. <coughs> Lays to her. Morona, urgent whisper. Come on, do it. Olivia, and why God? Allow such a terrible thing to happen, Aunt Lydia looks at Alfred. Alfred steals herself and joins in with terrible energy. The women point at Janine, accusing woman. Teach me a les- her lesson. Teach her a lesson. Teach her a lesson. Teach her a lesson. A scene of horror from another century. Flashback, wonderful house, red room. A child crying, bringing Alfred out of her memory. He stands out walks out to the bedroom. Wolford house, sitting room, night. Alfred enters. The room is quiet, empty. I, Alfred, I'm here before the others. What? Well, that too is part of the ritual. Alfred uh, steps up to a spot, marks a small waist cushion. She kneels, head down on her hands to her lap. 
of it I am to wait. I am to be a woman in waiting. Then I will only said Aunt Well, is what they used to do. It may not have seemed angry to you now, but after a while time it will. It will come angry. Then I want to throw up. Rita enters, wiping her hands on the dish towel. She takes her place, standing behind Alfred. Nick enters next, stands beside Rita, a long beat. Rita, will you hurry up? Some of us have got things to do, you know. Nick, hurry up and wait. Footsteps on the hall, then Serena Joy enters. She sits down, lights the cigarette, and beat, and then Serena Joy. Later in, as usual, then there's no one. What is it about men? A long beat, there's a knock at the door. Alfred, a knock is prescribed. This room is a domain, it's a little thing. There's this house. Little things mean everything. Serena Joy, come in. Come on, opens the door. He dresses in black uniform. He looks upon the assembled coat. Come on, a good evening. Then to Serena Joy, dear. He smiles almost warmly. She nods in return. Pulls out a key, a brass ring. Come on, then let's get started. The polished window box sits on the table beside his chair. Come on, he uses a key to unlock the box. Asterix, King Bible. James Bible opens the marked passage, clears his throat, Commander. Excuse me, reading. When Rachel saw to bear Jacob no children, Rachel envied her children, sister, and said to Jacob, Give me a child or else I die. She is reading. As we in 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 Waterhouse for the house, Serena Joy, bedroom later, closed it on Fred's face, clear soft grunting, offered, moves a bit in the same rhythm, Commander, and she said, Behold my maid, Berea, go on to her. Put him back, reveal the Alfred is lying between Serena's Joy's open legs. Serena Joy lies, fully clothed on her, outside, Colonel full pest goes to bed. She holds her for his hand, pulling her back awkwardly. Alfred's red coat is hitched to a voice. No higher, Commander, we shall bear upon thy knees. I shall have also have children by her. And she'll give her Berlina a handmaid to wife. And Jacob went on to her. But I let the commander fucks. Alfred, methodically, with monstrous assertion. On Alfred, her back hitting against Lena's joy's foam bow bone, trying not to wince, her face blank. On the commander, pumping furtively, he glances at Alfred with, for a moment, he avoids eye contact. On seeing a joy, pain, she grips Alfred, wrists tightly. Digs and nails him. On Alfred, what lesson is God teaching her? And Commander grunts softly. Jeremy Joy twists Alfred's wrist painfully, contorting her into posture that looks as soon as a missing bondage. Alfred bites her back a, bites back a moan. The Commander grunts loudly and comes. Alfred looks relieved. The Commander sits for, rests for a bit. Then he steps back and pulls up his pants, neatens his clothes. He does perfectly, formally, and leaves. The door closes. Alfred is left entangled with Serena Joy, a lionel for a bite. Then Serena Joy roughly extracts herself and sits up and finds a cigarette and lights up. Serena Joy, get out. Alfred hesitates, startled by an venom. Serena Joy, are you deaf? Alfred, respectfully. The chances are better if I lay on you at my back afterwards. Serena Joy, slow, fierce, just get out. Alfred gets out, get off and the bed and leaves. I'm Serena Joy for a miserable beat. Then we go through the house bedroom late later. Alfred lies in the bed, awake. Moonlight through the curtain takes patterns on her face. Says her to Sammy. We plays on her mind. He tries to settle her thoughts. I'm not working, Alfred. This is what I do when I'm back to my room. And, and then I take off my clothes. I want to wash. I want that, but it's not allowed. I put on my nightgown and go to bed. I don't sleep. I try to not smell them on me. I tried to think about something else, and then the moon is the same as something. I haven't changed that. And I think about the moon, and then terribly, I can feel the commanders come, running up with me. I can feel it on my legs. And then, rising panic, I can smell it. Alfred goes out of bed, driven by waves of claustrophobic panic. He heads out of the house. Waterford House stays. I couldn't even use. Alfred runs down the staircase. She's figuring out Waterford House. Backyard night continues. Alfred runs out of the garden. Back four. Into the yard. A tall fence protects the garden. She stops at the grass, breathing hard, trying to calm down. She looks at the moon, pale white. 
Suddenly she feels someone watching. She turns. Nick sits on the garage steps outside his room. He folds. A blade warm paper at back. He is reading the call light. Off in the next eyes, look eyes, the moonlit shines for a burglar ground. Nick, and Nick can see the silhouette of a body. Off it is frozen for a beat. Then she turns around and turns, runs inside. Woodford House, bedroom, night. Alfred run, comes in, reading. He sits on the bed, but a mind races. Alfred, we tell, we tell the commander, will he wake me him up or wait for morning? How long do I have? But I don't, didn't do anything, but not really. And then that's bullshit. I left my room. That's enough. They say we don't need a reason but anyway. The commander can punish us any way he wants. Belt of steel cable. He could shoot me in the fucking head. I hear the real creative ones like to tie your hand. Our hands on the stove burn us with wires and then breeders don't need their hands. As she fights panic, red centre curve between the night flashback, moonlight shines the rows of blots, hemorrhage and train sleep. On Alfred and sleeping, a small mumbling boy wakes her. She sits up but looks inside across the room. Janine stands at the window naked. Her eyes is still bandaged. With a red nightgown, she's tangled on the floor beside her. She stares out mumbling, offers red walks to her. Janine mumbling, hello, can I help you? And then good morning, welcome, Alfred, Janine. Janine makes a fix in a smile. The other her mates are staring. Red as Alma sits up. Alma, put your clothes on, Janine. Janine and, and Beth is on the back track. I don't, I just don't want to put your gown out, your gown, Janine. Scary friendly. Hello, welcome. Can I help you? Maura steps up. Maura. To the other handmaids, go to bed. Don't make this a thing. Melissa handmaids, head back to bed. Alfred, Janine, wake up. You're having a nice dream. Dreamfred, Janine looks at Alfred, but he isn't talking to her. He's talking to an imagined world. Janine, hello. My name's Janine. I'm your server this morning. Can I have get you some coffee to start? I don't know. Rona, oh Christ of Alma, don't swear, Mona. Alma, go back to your goddamn bed. That one sinks away. Alfred, snap out of it, Janine. Come on, Janine, smiling. Have a nice day now. Maria grabs Janine by shoulders and slaps her hard, Mona. Rina, you aren't here there anymore. That's all gone. Now get back to your bed. Janine touches her cheek, confused Janine. Why did you hit me, so I thought? Wasn't it good? I can bring you another one. Murray, Mona, my name is Mona, and this is the Red Centre. Janine, I don't know any Mona. Mona, you don't, don't you know what you what you do? You see, send you to the colonies. You will clean up toxic waste. The skin will peel off in the sheets. You'll die, you'll die, Janine, Janine, breaking. I want to go home. I want my mum. Lee starts to cry. Alfred pushes her out the ground. Her hands, Alfred, warmly. Put on your clothes, Janine, get into bed. He nods, she puts on a nightgown, whimpers, she snuffles back to the cot, Marina. Shut up, to offers. She goes, does it again, I'm not going around, slap her. Hard, don't be a fucking pussy about it, Alfred, okay? Marina, and that kind of stuff is contagious, it's going to survive, we need to keep our fucking shit together. They all close up to breaking. No, Alfred nods, but in flashback, Wilfred House, bedroom night. Alfred paces Mona, Marina words are in the head of Alfred. Pull your fucking shit together. Alfred takes a breath, calms down a little. Alfred, you're alive. They're all that matters. You're alive. Alfred has morning. Morning. Nick polishes the commander's back car with a soft rag. Turning up, he's off seen Alfred watching for the bedroom window. Alfred, they hasn't, they hasn't changed the way men carry their cars. I still don't get it. Wilfred House, bedroom, current in his Alfred looks out the window watching Nick. Alfred, we saw outside last night. I didn't know he did, but the eyes haven't come for me. 
No black van, no boots on the staircase, nothing yet. This is the old toes, three slow chimes off red racks, offered three bells a death scale. Now they're just calling us, there's a suffering today. And then I'm not safe, I know that soon enough a bell should, could ring for me, and then, not today, and then, okay, as Mona would say every day, the Bob Brown is a good day, and with some nice tequila, it's a fucking great day. Alfred heads out. Alfred house, kitchen. Alfred enters. Rita gets out the shopping basket. The food token, she's not happy. Alfred, blessed day. And then I've been called. Rita, crabby. Yep, I heard. Now I've not got my work. I've got my work to do. And you're shopping. Females and your whole day goes to the goose. Alfred, I'm sorry. Nick enters. Alfred stops, surprised to see him. He hesitates as well, but Alfred decides to be bold. Alfred, good morning. Suspicious casual greeting. Definitely a breach of casual etiquette. The strict etiquette. Rita shoots a look. No taking a note. Nick considers that Nick. Good morning to Rita. Miss Rutherford wants you to go off, off remember to get oranges if they have any. Rita, bitter. Yes, sir. Uh, my pleasure then. Any other special requests? Alfred think. Alfred thinks then. Alfred. Then, then they had tuna, uh, loaves and fishes yesterday. It looked good. You should get some. Off it looks at to Nick. The tuna is an outside joke. He knows he don't, won't, doesn't make it. In his world of endurance and danger, he's sending a message asking a question. He, may, he had a moment, remember? We're friends, aren't we? You're trying to charm him. It might keep her alive. Later. Oranges and tuna sounds delicious. On his eyes. Wilfred. Under his, uh, under his eye, Rita leaves. After the Nick stands in silence, Nick is cool, unreadable. After a long beat, Nick smiles, defiant. Before maybe Alfred has brought herself a little safety, some goodwill, the balls tell again. Free so chimes, Nick, blessed be the fruit. Alfred, self satisfied, free be. Alfred leaves, a free lap, the sound of the bell, tolling again slowly. A steady chime now. Alfred leaves, pre the sound of the bell, tolling again slowly, steady as he chime now. The wall, the dark common day, inside the tower overlooking the common, bells ring in the hair, the sound is huge, melody evil. Down below, hammers converge, they move through an old great gate, they hate the circle gates of the wall, the cloaks again, they make a red driver, flowing into the grassy field, they gathering for the vice averaging. Offered to the tolling of the bells we walk. To all paths come u- once used by students past buildings. At once lecture halls and dooms. And then you build and belong to the eyes now. No one ever goes in. Not willingly. That no one ever comes out. God is like a path. But here it hurting. The way is watching, listening. The crowd we hear offered. He here waits as the other hand is praised. And strange greetings. Praise be the blessed. May the Lord open. Offred, this is a strict, district, district subject. Hammers only. They won't have it unless they, they, they don't have them very often anymore. There's, there's less need. Walls well, so we're disciplined then. I don't want to be, I don't want to be telling this story. Ofgen sets up. Ofgen, blessed be the fruit of Ofred. May the Lord open, paired, and they join the uh, made others, heading for the six gates. The common continues at the gate. In front of the lawn is a front large stage. Microphone, centre stage, a forklift, two ropes hang full of blades. We notice there is a public, this is a public execution. Red cushions sit in rows of glass. How many have come in the clues, cushions, kneel, guardians, watch some, everyone. Alfred crosses the grass, looks a familiar face along the sea. See your handmaid, Alfred. When there are so many of us together, sometimes you can find someone you know. For, or from the Red Centre, you can trade some news if you're careful. Alfred spots someone, drifts over. It's Redhead Emma from the Red Centre. Alfred, this is the fruit, Emma, with recognition. May the Lord open. There are guardians everywhere. Emma only glances up. They speak in very low whispers. Emma, hey. Alfred whispers, Emma. Where are you posted? Emma whispers, Commander Elders, he can't barely get it up. Where are you? Alfred Waterford, Emma, fancy pants, nice house, I bet. 
saw Gabby a few months ago. She had a midge carriage, a somber beat, moaning in lost pregnancy, and then Offred. Have you seen Laura? Ella, not since the centre. Offred, me neither. If you read away, how many turns around? Janine, we know her from a scarred lid and empty socket with a right eye used to be. She smiles clearly and a bit insane. Janine, now, Friday, oh, she's dead, Alma. Janine, a nearby guardian stares. The guardian quiet. They feel silent. Look down meekly across the common. A procession of aunties fails to stay behind them. Guardians of Blackwoods, savages, escort, two manacled man readers. Prisoners stumble, drugged. To keep them from struggling, the guardians move off. Offred leans. Offred leans close to Janine. Janine, Offred whispering. Janine, who's dead? Janine, brightly. Mourn her. She hung herself. And then. Janine. She used the bed sheet. They're blue, white, mine were white. Offred can't breathe. Gorona killed herself. She has no time to so she says, I ain't believing the steps to the microphone. Linda, to your place, please. Thank you. Janine moves away, Offred, leaving Offred shaking. Off again watches her, always watching and listening. Off Dundee Jen. Well, good afternoon, girls. How many is in the news? Good afternoon, or not Lily. Offred doesn't respond. She's still in shock of Lydia. Don't you know, look, l- love those savages? Who loves them? Does her hands shoot up and around the Lily? I hate them. They're wasteful. You girls are given so much. You are so privileged. And yet you still too weak, so wicked and wicked like Offscott. And the stage the savages drag Offcott forward. The first command hammered. Offcott can barely stand by herself. Aunt Lydia, the filthy wanton whore, will lure the god into breaking his pledge on accidents. Can you even stand to look at her gowns? Hammered is in uniform. No, Aunt Lydia. Offred doesn't understand. Offred shoots at her a look. There are guardians everywhere, watching, looking for any disobedience of Glen. Lo, Offred. No good. Offred is lo- still lost thinking of Mora. I say to Frey, a young handyman is dragged forward. Not linear. What a good little Offred. A girl, Offred. A girl just disagreed enough to commit adultery with her commander. I don't know on his own roof, where she was welcomed by his wife. Off where he on stage the savages help the drowsy animators out of footsteps, slide the nooses around their necks. Aunt Lydia, the disgusting creatures have given us no choice. They asked for this, didn't they, girls? Hammers, yes, Aunt Lydia. Aunt Lydia, yes, they did. We are bound by grace to oblige. Off right. Well, are we ready? Aunt Lydia looks back at the savages, put down canvas, hoods over the prisoners, then nod. Everything is ready. Aunt Lydia continues, praise be the crowd. Are you ready, girls? Handmaidens in uniform. Yes, Aunt Lydia. Aunt Lydia, hands, please. Moons, moving together, all the handmaids. Put one hand over their hearts. Aunt Lydia does the same. Off she nuts Alfred. Blankly, ultimately, Alfred puts her hand over her heart. Aunt Lydia, all together now. And then, his will will be done. Unison. Handmaidens in unison. His will will be done. The soldiers kick out the stalls. Alfred looks up. Offering a lost cut and the ridges. Ropes go tight, neck snap, muscles spasm, feet jerk of jewel of urine from Northcott falls into the stage. Offred rain imagining him all red goes pale. A cheer rises. Olivia raises a hand and an enemy is so silent. Olivia, men, and men, some of you may already heard of a special treat for you today. Please stand up and form a circle. The smiles down, magnificent. The same man is shove as he may form a circle. It's such you know what's coming, Aunt Lydia. Holy girls, you know the rules. Offred comes out of a frog. Offred, what's happening? Offred, a persecution? A participation to our, our guardians appear of dragging a man. He wears a torn guardian's uniform. His face bruised and bloody. Offred, my friend, your big eyes look familiar somehow. They drag him to the circle of the handmaidens. Aunt Lydia, this man wants the guardian and the army of Gideon. Convicted of rape, low moan for the crowd. The penalty for rape, you know, is death, but there is the worst. He raped the handmaiden. She was pregnant. The baby died. A wave of rage for the handmaidens. On off, Fred. On off, it, and she finally recognizes the god in me. Flashback. Wood, main, marine woods. Day, flashback. Her main woods for me and Pauline. Off, Fred runs with Hannah in her arms. The guardians descend on off, road, Fred. Putting away a screaming daughter. The beady eyed guardian smiles, is truncheon hitting Offred. She falls, beady eyed guardian, bitch. 
Looking up, she sees his face. Patrick ends. Common that day, the garden in the circle, the same beady eyed garden in the woods, offered balls with fury, ready to pounce. Off she pulls her back. Off her homemade already charged well. Aunt Lydia looks up proudly. Aunt Lydia, until I, and not until I steal the signal when I blow the whistle. What you do is up to you till I blow it again. Are you ready? Aunt Lydia raises her whistle to, to her lips. The guards release the prisoner's arms. Biddy eyed God in staggers, falls to his knees, blushes intentionally, throws on Aunt Lydia's lips, closing around the whistle. She blows the whistle, a shrill, high pitched tone. Off it screams and attacks all around her. The crowd surges a tide of rage and bread. Offred at first to get the reedy eyed prisoner. He looks up. Offred kicks him viciously and again he crumbles backwards. He stomps on him. But above, Offred vanishes into the red throng as the handmaiden descend on the prisoner. The prisoner disappears beneath the red cloaks. We see the fair flashes, blood, fists, screaming, choking. Up on the stage, Aunt Lydia raises her whistle. Up her lips and starts blowing as the sound echoes. Offred finds Offred finds Offred pulls her back. Offred, are you right? No answer. Offred looks down and sees a clump of hair in her hand. Janine emerges and from the crowd, blood swears her face. She smiles. Janine, have a nice day. Jane starts to walk away. Offred calls after her. She might know how more about Marina. Offred, Janine, they're loud. Janine, this is dangerous. Even calls using Janine's name is dangerous. A muttering crowd come come and a voice, but very a few a few nearby guards turn. Offred starts to have follow Janine. Offred grabs Offred's arm, pulls away. Offred, no, no. Offred is shaking, unhinged. Offred leads her away. A past the spot of participation. White sheet now covers the remains of the dead guardian. Blood sweeps through the sheet. And Alfred, what did I do? Ofgen, low walk. Alfred bays, following Ofgen over the common. Go to Red Street's day, the handmaidens lead the savaging. They spit in the players and head in different directions. Ofgen leads Alfred by arm, going stirring what's sort of empty now. Most of the handmaidens have peeled into off in the other directions. Ofgen walks away from the uh, head down, speaks in low with secret whispers as they walk. Often whispers, I am so sorry about your friend, Mona. Often nods, so he's still shaken from everything that's happened. We recognise that Ofgen is breaking rules here. This is a dangerous talk, Ofgen continued whispers. You know, you know her, the Red Centre? Ofred nods, and then? Ofred, before, I beat Ofgen. What was there, was there before? Ofgen almost offered, was offered a thin smile, a moment of connection, trust almost, but should we, she trust Ofgen? Of the end of the walls, the storefront. Across the street, a sign is just a photo, photo, photograph. Bees around the round loaf. Bread and honey. Of the end, there used to be an ice cream, that used to be an ice cream place. Of it, I remember. Often they they did had this amazing sort of caramel, and then the stuff that he was that stuff is better than sex. Alfred reach reacts to this bless me surprise to Alfred. Always thought, and then you always were such a true believer. Often so were you, so stinking pious, pious. And what do you really they do they do that well? Make us distrust each other. Black man passes slowly. Windows attended on the ride of sign of painting of a sign, but terrifying image. An eye with two angel wings. Secret beast on the prowl. Alfred watches the go past. Terrified. Alfred eyes. Alfred, come on. Just keep walking. They head off in silence. Alfred looks back on the van. Follows for a block and peels off. Time. Golf scale neighborhood day. Alfred and Alfred walk through towards home. It's quiet. Only a few people on the streets. They look down and speak in low voices. Alfred. How old is your daughter? Alfred reacts to surprise. Alfred. Off her back. When you saw the girls outside the church, Ofgen has been waiting, watching, taking note. Ofgen, she could, she would be six. Hannah, this is the first time we've heard her name. Ofgen smiles. Ofgen, put in Ofgen. Offred, 
She's only thinking of me for stepping in front of a car, I said. I get it. My wife had and I had a son. Oliver, he's only ten by he's almost ten by then, I said. How do you know where they are? Austin, I'm about to roll. She's a family there. I had Canadian house parcels then. I didn't. I got caught at the airport. Alfred, we're trying to cross in the, the main with my husband. He split up and they killed him. His name was Luke. Now he is a name. You can hear the guilt in the voice. Alfred, Jen. We are well together. It wouldn't be done the same thing. You didn't want him. You wouldn't want, want going to let any of us get away. Not if you have a red tag. Alfred, I know. Then when I left him, I didn't even look back. This is clearly he talks to Alfred. Of Jen has nothing to say, no solace to offer. Waterford House continues. They stop in front of the Waterford House. Of Jen, this is to your stop, as you, you, they used to say, and then I'm Emily. Alfred hesitates. After keeping herself secret for so long, so keep saying alone her name she feels wrong, Alfred. June, I'm June. June, this is the first time the audience has heard her name. Has Alfred found a friend? Someone she can trust, Of Jen. Nice to meet you, June. Often is close. Often continued very slow. Listen to me. They're watching. There's an eye in the house. Be careful. Often react. Someone in the house is an eye. And there's an owl in the world. Could often notice. Is he helping off with Fred? Or there's some kind of trap. He my mind races. Two guards walk beside and towards him. Often set back. How? What's the head? A major of a dorsal handmaid. Often to Alfred. Blessed be the fruit. Where a friend walks away. Leaving off, off Fred stunned. Often walks away, leaving off Fred stunned. He turns and looks at the old world house. Beautiful Tabarax. There's a woman in red, a house in front of this stately, dangerous world. In a voiceover, we hear off Fred. A chair, a table, a lamp. Wilderfeld house, bedroom. Day. Off Fred sits in a red cloak, looking out the window. This is the image for the start of the episode. The outside, outwardly Tabrax, woman draped in red in this dull light house, perfect red room. June, I sit and watch the curtains move in the breeze, and then nothing can change, nothing someone is watching. All, it all has to look the same. Then before I tend to, if I, because I tend to survive, I tend to survive for her, and then my name is Hannah, my husband is Luke, and then my name is June, and... Then, some things can't be wiped away, some things can't be forbidden. Alfred looks out the window, still looking docile, seeming docile, but there's a new defiance in her eyes. End, pilot. <laughs>